It's been two weeks since I've been able to touch this project. It's been really busy at the auto house, which is actually a good thing. But because it's been two weeks, I kind of forgot where I was at. So looking for which one of these guys was reverse. Um, when you shift into reverse, it should close the, whichever one of these is the reverse switch and you should get continuity at one of these connectors. So I found the gray connector is the reverse switch. So when in reverse with a multimeter on this, you get continuity. So being two weeks later, I forgot where I was at. I actually had the impulse um, adapter shifter on here and I actually couldn't get the trans in reverse. And I about shit my pants because I was like, oh man, am I, have to, am I gonna have to pull the trans back apart? So to double verify, I put the OEM shifter back on and yeah, I'm in reverse right now, so no problem. But I'll show you guys, because this rod gets shortened like this, this thing gets to be at a much more extreme angle. So I'll install the impulse shifter right now, and I'll show you guys we might have to modify this. I'm not 100% sure why I can't get into reverse with the impulse shifter adapter right now, but um, pay attention because I'm in reverse right now and you can see like this isn't as an extreme angle But I'll show you guys in like fifth and then reverse. You'll see how far this guy like How extreme this pivot goes. So yeah, I'll put the impulse shifter on right now and we'll come right back All right, so after some trial and error, here's where we're at if you can see There's actually two shifter positions that this thing can go in but only one shift of position allows me to go through all seven gears, right? Six forward gears and then reverse. And that's this position. So putting the shifter higher up. Before I had it on the lower shifter position and I couldn't get into reverse. So I have all six gears now. On the OEM one, there's a mount to the body. So this thing could pivot. Um, now there's no mount to the body. So Impulse did it like this. So this thing can't move anymore. This thing's locked in one spot, which makes the angle of their adapter piece really important. If you can see, that's pretty close. When I tightened these bolts, I ended up using this crude feeler gauge and I stuck it right here to make sure that this, these two wouldn't contact. So yeah, this guy all the way that's reverse and you can see how close th these two guys are and then you can also see remember how I was saying that how close this thing was so how extreme this angle is and so that's reverse and then this should be fifth gear fifth gear is not so bad but reverse is like way over there because it's first and then reverses one more over so yeah to sum that up with the shifter relocation this is stationary you want this pretty much as straight up and down as you can as you can see this guy's a little bit kicked over um, down downwards and then before you plug this guy in double verify you get all seven gears so that's six forward gears plus reverse reverse is the most important because it's the, like it puts the pivot at the most extreme angle so yeah i will oh one more thing to note on the oem you can plug this in by itself but because this pivot is so short now you need to take off take off the mount plug the shifter in into this guy first and then the mount and all this plugs on separately otherwise you're not going to be able to get the shifter pivot in there all right, so I'll probably find another two, another whatever two pin for reverse for both sides on the trans and on the car. So yeah, I guess I'll take the T50 out of this thing now. So I got a one piece drive shaft made for this. The front yoke is W58, or I should say the front yoke is the same diameter and spline count as a W58. So if you're getting a one piece drive shaft made, make sure to contact your local drive shaft shop first to see what measurements they need. 
Um, I did this a little bit different. So typical stuff that they want to look for is the spline extrusion length. So that's how far the um, output on the trans sticks out from that from the seal. So on a T50, it sticks out more than a TL70 does. So again, the yoke that you need for TL70, same as W58, 38 mil diameter, and then it's a 21 spline. We're still using the Corolla diff in the back, so same diff flange. Three inch tube diameter for a one piece shaft. There's a term for it and a calculation, critical whatever. The length of the shaft and then how, f how many RPM it's going, that's, that'll determine the diameter of the shaft. Um, so three inch has been most common for what I've seen the one piece beam swap shafts and I've driven a beam swap car before with this shaft so or with a three inch shaft so um, three inch is should be the correct size if you want a one piece shaft so Grant's car already has a one piece in it so I went to the drive shaft shop um, with that one piece and told them to shorten it by a certain amount the total height I got the total height of both trans and then the measurement from the bell housing to the output seal and then you guys can do the math I told them to sh one piece shaft spline extrusion length and then I need a completely new shaft shortened this amount as compared to the original T51 piece that's in this car. Bigger joint in the front. Hopefully my math is correct. All right, so T50's out of this thing. Do, do, do. Special thing about 7A block, because the block's taller, it's actually harder to get those top two bolts. Just a fun fact. So the plan right now, this is the clutch disc from the impulse kit. We're gonna use the clutch disc only. I'm gonna take off that pressure plate and we're gonna use a, a roll lock disc and just clean up the surfaces of the flywheel and pressure plate. I Not the most ideal, but we're definitely limited on budget for this car and my life and our lives. Limited by budget for our lives, so. So yeah, we'll clean up both sides of those. I put that clutch in there not too long ago and this car is, doesn't see a lot of miles, so I know that pressure plate's still good. So we'll put this guy in. All this stuff minus this will get reused. I am going to call it a night. It is Sunday. So next time we come back, this guy should be going in. All right, here's where we're at. So I have the transmission assembled and then everything you see inside the bell housing, this is all 86 stuff. So the throwout bearing, the carrier, the fork, two clips I got this greased and ready to go ready to install this guy yesterday I got the clutch disc in here so again from last time because we're on a budget we're reusing the pressure plate and flywheel I just uh, broke the glaze off the friction surfaces and then we're going to use the provided impulse uh, clutch friction disc so yeah let's plug that thing in see how it goes I'm going to wait to put the shifter tripod on because we need to figure out I'm probably gonna have to bust a hole through somewhere here so once we get that married with the engine we'll have a better idea of where we need to bust a hole through the tunnel all right let's do it all right transmission is in got the trans mount you actually have to flip this guy the other way from the OEM position um, these extenders for the trans mount from Impulse go on top. Uh, no instructions for this kit, so I've been looking at their images that they have on Facebook. So these things go on top. They line up with the end two holes on the body. I've been trying to figure out this shifter position because there's two different heights. But as we discovered earlier on, I need it at the top height in order to get into all the gears. So I think I actually have to cut out this whole rectangle for this thing to sit up into the cabin. So I will temporarily bolt the transmount to the car so I can take the tranny jack out of the way. And then we'll 
take every all this shifter stuff out and then we'll get ready to uh, cut the rest of that hole out. All right, so, so far so good. This thing um, goes into every gear. First, second, and then reverse. Um, I guess the, the bad part is this thing. I took off the drift knob because we're gonna have to figure out a handbrake situation. Can you, can you see from here, before I started, I was, I was joking with these guys. Um, there's no instructions, so I looked at Impulse's uh, Facebook page for help. And uh, it's funny, they don't show any, sorry Impulse, they don't show any pictures without the interior in, probably because you gotta cut this hole. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry Grant, you're on vacation. I guess you'll, you'll see when you come back, but I'm, I'm betting on this six speed being worth it. All right, are we all ready? Ready to either for it to go good or bad? <laughs> all right. All right, so that's a good sign. The clutch works. There's no noise already. We're gonna we're gonna put it in first, and then uh, and then pray. Is the wheels moving? All right. So yeah, we're in first gear. And then to reiterate, this is the first uh, impulse uh, six-speed kit. And um, I know in the U.S., but probably outside the country too. So yeah, uh, why don't we try second? Great. First and second. The trans didn't blow up, we're all alive. I would say that's a success. <laughs> all right. All right, cool, we got this thing running. Yeah, we skipped over a bunch, but um, the OEM, you reuse the OEM mount, this actually has to be flipped around. And then Impulse provides the extenders to bolt to the body. Um, this is the OEM Speedo cable. I just have the zip tied off because we don't have a provision for Speedo anymore. Um, you can see the shifter linkage, that big ass hole we had to cut. I'll go back in the cabin and uh, go over the shifter. But yeah, one piece drive shaft. This is the same as W58. Um, Grant has some four links on order because one piece drive shaft you always have to adjust pinion angle so um, we'll do a pinion angle how-to video um, along with probably a four link install and adjustment video also OEM Corolla clutch fork and stuff and then uh, slave probably go road test in a second cool we'll go over one through six in reverse and then check out the shift mechanism on this guy. All right. So the issue is that this guy in uh, second and fourth hits the parking brake right now. So we'll have to figure something out for that. But one, two, three, four hits the parking brake, five, Six, and we'll do up and reverse. All right, that's it for Impulse Part 4. Remember to like and subscribe and listen to the Auto House podcast. Hopefully, we will get some track footage of this thing and uh, figure out like a shifter boots and uh, parking brake solution. But yeah, thanks again, you guys. I asked Grant the other day if I could put my shaft in his trunk.